A while back, a source familiar with the channel, but not necessarily with the thinking of the channel, asked me, Hey, uh, creep, what's your fascination with kookeries? Is it a fetish? And I corrected him and said, kookeries. And sir, the content to which you're referring to is just available for OnlyFans. Then I thought about it, didn't have an easy answer, and I just fell back to my well-reasoned, uh, I don't know, I just, I like the way they make me feel, okay? Before running off to my room to experience brief seasonal allergies and listen to some mega death, because Dave understands my pain, but I realized after that I should come up with an easy answer for noobs, not necessarily familiar with my specific type of bullshit. However, those familiar with my bullshit know that I bought my Bud K while drunk shopping on Amazon eight or nine years ago, and it was after using them, let's say not drunk, that I noticed what I like about them. They're a short-range chopping instrument that fills a gap between a machete and a hatchet. And if you're in an air quotes, survival situation, they work reasonably well as either. And they're also a form of overcompensation. So there it is. There's my answer. Today's YouTube art is a comparison between two, you know, well-known kukri companies in Nepal and their offerings in Makarta handled kukris. Specifically, the companies seen here in this sure to be trending video are KHHI and Kailash Blades. Both start at around 130 to 150 bucks, but will quickly add up as you click the options boxes and drop down choices and start on your fifth PBR. The Kugris are both slightly different in sizes with different handle layouts and different sheaths. The Kailash is known as the Dui Chura with the thinner performance grind option. Black Macarta Scales 13 inch blade, five and a half inch handle with a Western leather sheath and a whacking friendly full tang which is about $294 after shipping as awkwardly batoned in this video. The Kukri House Handicraft Industry, or KHHI for short, is the Makarta Kukri Live Edge, and an 11 and a half inch blade, and maybe the ridges uh, for the handle option. So with options, the blade size and shipping runs about $170. Of course, larger than an 11 and a half inch, it's gonna cost you more. And worth a dimensions time. Any other normal functioning people get physically ill about this section, like this guy? Sometimes you have to take a break from setting dogs on fire and go post a comment on your favorite hate subscription on YouTube, huh? So, what's the right size kukri for you? Like the overall length and weight? I'm a big guy, I like a big kukri. Mm-hmm. You know, with and without the sheaths. Gotta have the sheaths in there, that adds some weight to it. Blade size and cutting edge. When kukris are denoted in size, it's generally referring to their blade. I think I like a 13 inch or the best. Handle size and grip area. Although some measure from the center bolster. Others seem to measure from the bottom of the bolster to the tip. And take it from me, measuring from the butt seems even more impressive than those. Of course, no behind the edge on these because the full convex grind doesn't give a clear behind the edge measurement. Sorry about removing the blue lines, that adds too much. So first the blades. You might have noticed on paper these are the 11 and a half and 13 inch blades, but my measuring comes up a little larger. You may think it sounds like another bro on the internet doing some creative measuring, but I measured center bolster to tip. If a standard Ontario machete is about an 18 inch blade, a 13 inch or less kukri is a good option because they're thicker blade stock. They do make larger kukris, but I don't want a machete sized kukri. Maybe you're that sort of bro, but you're getting into lawn sword territory there. And there's only one man who can wield such a large, heavy blade capably. And he is known by the carcasses of the tatimi mats that litter his floor. Blades here are very rust friendly because they are hammered out of 5160 carbon steel. Both are finished in a polished luster and Kailash has a few optional finishes. You can care for your kukri by caressing it softly as you fall asleep and protecting the blade from moisture by a light coat of oil when not in use. But even if you do that, they will still stain and patina with use. Of course, to the modern knife guy, the word use has been replaced with resale value. The spine of the K-Lash is thinner because it was ordered in a performance grind. You can order them in a standard grind or also heavy duty. The thicker the grind means a thicker blade spine and a heavier kukri. The performance is thick enough for literally everything I do with a kukri, which is basically... However, people who pry automobile doors off and rocks for recreational activities may want the heavy duty or a shovel or pry bar. 
KAHHI doesn't appear to have these options, although I guess you could send a long verbose email to them about spine thickness. The handle. The big deal here is the Micarta fellas, a phrase absolutely never followed up with vigorous lovemaking. Micarta gives a great grip and it's durable. It's a fabric imbued with resin and can be polished like the KHHI or left in a quote rustic finish like the Kalash. Since these are for yard work, the looks don't concern me. The Kalash has simple ridges and not metal, which gives it a nice hand feel. The Kukri House, on the other hand, has some fancy brass rings. The Kalash's handle has endured a lot of handle pounding from a piece of wood, and it looks pretty much like it did when I received it, which kind of looked like it was pounded before I got it. Micarta holds its shape better than some types of wood or water buffalo horn on traditional Kukri handles. It won't expand or contract as it ages and reacts to moisture from the blood or the sap of your foes. Both Kukris are full tank, giving them a bit more heft in the handle department. The Kalash's simpler handle is a little more comfortable to me too. I like less ridges or no ridges in my Kukri handle. The Kukri house has some ornamental rings, one of which I lost in the yard through the course of producing a SEO survival YouTube video. The sheath. The traditional sheath style on a Kukri is the dap sheath. And in my opinion, a dap sheath, like a bad pair of underwear, rides too high. It's usually a thin leather wrapped over a wood frame or a cardboard frame. Kukri House has an optional Kydex sheath, or you could add a loop for better retention. In the original version of this script, I called uh, Kydex Micarta for this whole section here because I'm an idiot. Kydex doesn't retain moisture like wood or leather, so it might be a better option if you don't practice blade lubing and cleaning after use and live in a moisture rich, extremely tactical environment. The Kukri House sheath had a misalignment inside with the wood blade guides and I wound up slicing through the sheath because the interior of the sheath guided it through the surface of the leather during the YouTube demonstration. Oops, see what I mean here? Now Kalash has options of Kydex, Stap, and a Western style leather. The Western leather dangler is my favorite and even includes a loop at the bottom for a leg lash. I prefer a handle butt at or below the belt line like this. And Kalash has two retention loops. This is my third Kalash Western leather sheath and they are all consistent and well made. Two snaps means the Kukri isn't coming out. The Kukri house comes with a small knife on the side here for your feather sticks or whatever bushcraft sculpture you're fond of making in the wilderness and posting to your social media. Also the smaller secondary knife just kind of sits there and I dropped it while skipping around the yard once or twice making my videos. Because playing with Kukris makes me happy. Alright, comparisons from the old Kukri collection. Did you know that if you lay out more than three kukris to show your internet friends, it's called an incel of kukris? First, the KHHI. I think the 11 and a half inches of the Kukri House Micarta is a little too short. The handle is a nice blend of two shiny colors, but I'm not sure I need the finger guard up front. Most of the anti-slippage on the handle is done by the rings and the butt. Perhaps in a Kukri fight you get extra protection. I'm sure someone below is bringing up that point. The Kalash Dwi Chura is more of a workhorse here. The simpler handle holds up better to abuse. An example being direct sustained hits to the handle with a piece of wood, otherwise known as bushcrafting. I wouldn't call the handle pretty out of the box. Maybe polish it, put on some lipstick, have a fancy dinner with a few bottles, and then it'll look a little more like the Kukri houses. We call that DIY. Now the Bud K. It's cheap $20 Indian Kukri. You could skip two Big Mac meals and buy yourself this. I think that's how I'm going to discuss price from here on out. Fast food references. They're pretty common, easy to sharpen, have a crappy sheath. A good starter and a surprisingly light, well-balanced kukri compared to the popular thick-spined ones. Now, speaking of, a thick-ass Himalayan imports, I believe called the Daradun. It's nice, but the Kalashes have spoiled this simple YouTube artist by being thinner and having more comfortable handles. Kalash puts an emphasis on distal tapering, meaning thinning out the blade stock and spine toward the edge and the tip. Fit and finish is similar to the Kukri House's and Kalash blades. Now the excellent Zombie Tools Vacra. This is the older version, and now they have a newer, updated revision on their website, which is similar yet different to the older one, and also another way to state revision. This one's pretty badass and sure to impress all your virgin friends. Has wonderful edge retention, a great sheath that comes with a leg lash, and a comfortable leather wrapped handle. It's been my favorite Kukri class blade for a while, but the K lashes have begun to occupy the top spot alongside it. 
For example, this leather handled rat tail pensioner here from Kale Ash. One of uh, three Kale Ashes I currently have right now. Alongside the zombie tools, these two have the two most comfortable handles. We're going to wrap it up. Since we've made it to the 10 minute mark of a video about kukris together, possibly with the aid of drugs or alcohol, let's listen to a few more of my internet opinions on my weapon collection and saying kukri a dozen more times. First opinion. Maybe to the horror of the true keyboard kukriista defending the honor and tradition of the dap sheath, I don't care much for the dap sheath. Both KLH and KHHI give you the options of a better sheath, more durable construction, and a better blade retention. So you don't look like an asshole if your kukri falls out at the Ren Fair when you're skipping along with the wenches. I like a leg strap included as a standard option and not a paracord sculpture rope compromise. Now the second thing I would uh, say that I like that's non-traditional is a comfortable handle. KLH has options for that too. Oftentimes the handle rings on a full tang kukri have sharper edges because the handle scales and tang follow the same pattern. KLH gives you the option for designing custom handles. Since kukris are often hand finished or fully handmade on simple machines, they don't often account for the well lotioned tender hands of the western apartment dwelling man children with disposable income. Because of the rings and unchampered butt caps, your hands may develop what's known as a hot spot, denoted by distressed red owie parts on the fingers, palms, and hands. So, Your Highness, perhaps gloves are in order. Both were fairly sharp out of the box, and the edges held up well to hammering on the fibrous cotton wood. And if there's a batoning hell, it's filled with cotton wood and the types of bros who say batoning hell and make videos like this. Translated from Knife Bro, that means edge retention on both was kind of similar. Although the kale ashes was a tad thinner near the edge, retained its sharpness a hair longer, and most importantly for me was easier to maintain that edge by using Spyderco Sharp Maker rods, kind of like you would a Chack Mac. Although, none of these come with a Chack Mac, so you do have to find your own sharpening rod or, you know, stick. However, the sheath splitting on the Kukri houses and the losing of the handle ring give the, pun definitely intended, edge to the kale ash. In addition to my personal preferences of a simpler, more durable handle, the longer blade on the kale ash wins arbitrary internet points from me there too. The kale ash, though, costs 13 Big Mac meals more decked out the way I like, so there's that. And since my timing is impeccable, Kale Ashes is a 10 week wait time on order fulfillment right now because Nepal is currently shut down. COVID is obviously a problem there too. In fact, they shut down several weeks earlier than the diseased beaches of Florida. My point being, Florida never change. However, I will make the world a slightly better place, but not by much. And I'll give away a few of my well whacked kukris on Instagram in the coming weeks. So follow me there if you're not. It'll have to be in the US because shipping's a bitch on these. Kukri House and KLS donated these to the channel, so I'm going to donate a few of my Kukris to my viewers through a game of chance, I guess. Not really a game. A contest of chance. That doesn't make sense either. So if you're the type of person who likes this sort of video, subscribe. Buy a t-shirt seen here or a sticker. Help support the channel directly. Also, say hi to the patrons, because they're saying hi right back. Give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment, follow me on Instagram, click the bell to be alerted when I release a video. Anyway, thanks for watching. You guys are like Cooper's to me. Take a shot. Torreador, Torreador, es
soldier bien, oui, soldier combattant, que ne noir te regarde, et que le mort t'attend, au réador, l'amour, l'amour t'attend. Hello, hello, hello. 